Hi there, best of Trekkers! Star Trek has more than 40 seasons of television, and we're going to find the good, the bad, and the Barkley on this edition of... Yeah, it's the best, but worst, but no one has seen. Yeah, it's the best, but worst, but Trek's ever seen. Using my data on every live-action episode, I've averaged the more than 800 episodes that make up Trek. I've clumped some similar or sequential seasons that average out to be neighboring into condensed entries in some places to allow for more overall seasons to be showcased, per the usual starting at fifth worst. The Season 1 Curse Interestingly, four of Trek's first seasons conglomerate here, almost as if it took time for the casts to gel and the shows to find their particular footing. So this entry encompasses TOS, DS9, Voyager, and Enterprise. Honestly, the inaugural season of TOS is probably its best, by a very small margin, with episodes like Balance of Terror and fan favorite The City on the Edge of Forever. It unfortunately also contains episodes like The Alternative Factor and Miri, while DS9 is another case of having mostly decent episodes like its intro emissary, fan favorite duet, and my personal season favorite that feels oddly poignant today in the hands of the prophets. But it's nowhere near as good as the seasons that the show would have going forward. Move Along Home and The Passenger really hold this first season back. In Voyager's case, the season has pretty standard Trek there, not containing any of the series' worst, but never had a breakout episode that charts above middle-of-the-road Trek. Enterprise actually comes in as the best of the worst season ones in this particular block. It had big misses like Unexpected, Terra Nova, and Desert Crossing, but it also had some of the series' better episodes, like its pilot Broken Bow, the introduction of Shran in the Andorian Incident, and Cliffhanger Shockwave. Though it was unfortunately the overall lackluster start to season one that turned me off as a viewer prematurely when the show was in its first run, and I didn't see the complete set until more than a decade after it was cancelled. And by that point, the show got good, but really got shortchanged by stumbles like this first season early on. Number four, TOS's second season. If a season of television could have bipolar disorder, it would be this one. It contains my personal favorite episode of TOS, The Trouble with Tribbles, and other top episodes of all time, like The Ultimate Computer, Journey to Babel, and The Doomsday Machine. Though, simultaneously, the season is packed with so much skippable Trek, like Cat's Paw, The Apple, and Omega Glory, and those are just the lowest of the low, with a whole bunch of episodes that are watchable, but just barely. The series almost ended here, and, um, maybe it should have. Number 3. TNG's Second Season This season mimics a lot of what I just said about the previous entry, it's miles better than the series' first season, and actually has a pair of top 25 all-time episodes, in The Measure of a Man, and our first look at the Borg in Q Who. The elephant in the room that drags the season down is its infamous clip show finale during the late 80s writer's strike, in which Diana Mulder is the only actor that feels like she showed up to act in her finale with the franchise. Beyond Trek's worst episode, it has two more at the bottom of the pile in Manhunt, and maybe the most racially insensitive moment in Trek in Up the Long Ladder. While I'm a big Pulaski fan and can see this as a stepping stone in the series to get to better Trek, TNG's second season mostly doesn't feel like what we got down the line. Number 2. TOS's Third Season Take a show that had a relatively low budget for its time and cut it more than in half for a final season. While this describes two different seasons in Trek, to which Enterprise in its fourth outing said, Hold my beer, and proved it had settled into its groove. Though TOS's third season opener really set the tone for what was to come, with one of the series' worst episodes, Spock's Brain. 
At least it immediately gets better in the next installment with the Enterprise incident, and later sets up future Mirror Universe shenanigans with the Tholian web. Outside of those, pretty much all of it is otherwise subpar, not just by Trek standards, but generally awful in terms of television. The Way to Eden, The Savage Curtain, which does admittedly get better if you can make it through the ridiculous first 15 minutes of Abraham Lincoln floating in space, and it's gone with a whimper finale turnabout intruder. Janice Kirk was almost where the franchise died until a mediocre animated series a few years later, and a much more successful film franchise. The worst at number one? TNG's first season. Clearly not learning any lessons from its predecessor 20 years before, the first season of TNG feels like a natural extension of TOS Season 3. And that's not a good thing. Even straight up rewriting episodes we'd basically already seen in the previous series done better. When one of your more interesting episodes is this, we're in trouble. For anything people have to say about Discovery these days, they had a first season that actually worked on most levels. Well, this season of TNG is firing on precisely no cylinders. In fact, Naked Now is probably the season's worst episode, with Justice and Code of Honor not being much better. I mean, after this, I have no idea how the show even got a second season. TNG is the show I grew up on, but even in those early days, there's a disconnect between the first two seasons and the really decent for the 90s show that we got in its later run. Its two best episodes are probably Coming of Age and its finale, The Neutral Zone, which themselves are no better than Middle of the Road Trek. If Coming of Age hadn't culminated in B-movie sci-fi claymation bugs, as in its later season payoff, I think it could have been in the top 200. Thankfully, the studio stuck with this show that had serious flaws, and if you want to better understand the reasons for it, I highly recommend checking out the documentary Chaos on the Bridge. As we transition to the best of more than 40 seasons of Trek, if you're enjoying the content, please consider a like and subscribe. Number 5. Strange New World Second Season I put a very big asterisk on this because I haven't properly done a double watch, but the most recent live action season, as of the release of this video, feels like New Trek has finally hit its stride, finally turned out a franchise top 25 in the Lower Decks crossover episode Those Old Scientists. It also took a big swing that has divided the fan base with Subspace Rhapsody, and, at its worst, a standard old-school style Trek script with Among the Lotus Eaters and the first meeting of Spock and Kirk in an otherwise forgettable Lost in Translation. But these are all at least serviceable, and it would not surprise me if future seasons of this show make an updated version of this list someday. Number 4. DS9's 4th and 5th Seasons Worf seems to be the final piece of the puzzle that took DS9 from pretty good to its best, as the Federation find itself on the enemy side of its frenemy status with the Klingons, and the Dominion War comes into focus by the end of the fifth season. Some of the many top episodes in these seasons include The Visitor, Homefront slash Paradise Lost, The Quickening, Empok Nor, and Call to Arms. Fifth season's Let He Who Is Without Sin is probably the worst out of those two seasons, and over the years, I think it may have become more poignant. They were able to do largely self-contained episodes while weaving multiple background threads that would all come together later in the series, and these are testaments to the producers and writers behind this show. And it was so consistent writing with these two seasons, they end up back to back in series and average episode ranks. Number 3. Picard Season 1. This season got off to a slow start, but well set up our new main characters. While this is one of those kind of surprising findings when you 
purely look at the show by the numbers, almost all the episodes in this season are all 8s or 9s out of 10. No top top episodes, and only one weird stinker with Stardust City Rag. The finale lags a bit, but in particular, the culmination of every character's pain for the last decade or so can be traced back to Commodore O, and Santiago Cabrera doing the La Serena Hollows is a great touch to this interesting first season that bucks the all-too-common trend of a poor first showing. At number two, Discovery's third season. Here comes the flood of ignorant comments. Fifteen dollars, and uh, I just don't like my Star Trek and stuff. While I agree that Discovery has some problems, particularly in the realm of season arcs, when you boil episodes individually down, there just aren't any Spock's brains or shades of greys. So, when Discovery reset itself in the 32nd century, gets some decently convincing villains involved, and brings back the Guardian of Forever to set up maybe the franchise's best Mirror Universe-centered episodes, while simultaneously setting up the current filming Section 31 movie, you actually get a decent season of Trek. It's like Enterprise's third season where it finally tried something new and it paid off. The series' biggest flaw is its overall lack of consistency, with this being better than one would expect when you purely look at it by the numbers. But its subsequent season four nearly made the bottom entries in this video. And the best season of Trek? DS9's sixth season. While the rest of these top seasons only have an average 30 episode difference in their rankings, this season is a full 40 points ahead of its next competitor. Though, let's just get the worst out of the way with the likes of Quark getting a boob job, because other than that, everything is at minimum serviceable, and also contains probably the best episode in the whole franchise, In the Pale Moonlight. The Dominion War is in full swing, and the first six episodes where they control Terok Noor are all excellent top episodes in their own right. There's also the amazingly meta Far Beyond the Stars, and the minimalist two-man show Waltz. It even has great fun with episodes like One Little Ship and Who Mourns for Mourn. For me, this may just be the best season of television ever. What's your favorite season of Star Trek?